Hello and welcome to the Blueberry Plot. My name is Susan McCallum. I am a soft root researcher and blueberry breeder here at the James Hutton Institute in Dundee. I'd like to talk today a little bit about how we turn data into decisions. As a researcher, in particular as a breeder, collecting information and doing something valuable with that information is critical to any successful programme. The breeding programme here was officially launched in 2017, but we started doing crosses in 2014. We are currently evaluating 1,200 advanced selections and 1,800 younger plants which are fruiting this year for the first time. In order to accurately assess plant performance and fully capture the best performers, we need to collect and more importantly analyse data. Now data comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and it can be collected in a number of different ways. Field walks, fruit sampling, lab analysis, DNA analysis, literature reviews, talking to other growers, the list is endless but the amount of data that we can collect is also endless but we need to make sure that we're managing that and making decisions based on what we're finding each season. So the dates for example tell us an awful lot about the season itself. It can identify problems like potential for frost damage during the flowering. Selections might be too late to fully ripen and that's something that we certainly see here in Scotland. We can have a variety that looks like it's ripening really well, starts to get that initial colour and then the Scottish summer disappears and the fruit no longer ripens. How long between flowering and fruit set? This data can allow us to predict when the fruit is likely to fully ripen and that's really important for the growers to know how best to manage and, and you know, look after their crops each year. The environment plays a crucial role in plant and fruit development and can make or break a season for any grower. We monitor the environment through a suite of different sensors. We have Agritech sensors, we have data loggers from Delta T, we have um, little tiny tags that we're looking at the temperatures all the time in the tunnels. We monitor the irrigation and the fertigation and that's so we can keep on top of what the plants are getting each year and how they're then performing as a result of that. If we need to change things then we can do things quite rapidly. As well as the Met Office data that's collected on site. This allows us to compare seasons and it also lets us get ahead of particular events that may be coming up. So if a frost is imminent while we're flowering, there's steps that we can take to sprinkle irrigate to try and prevent damage you know, happening to the flowers which would then have a knock-on effect to the fruit. If high winds are forecast, we can take action against that. So it's really important that we're always monitoring the crops, looking out for season and acting when we see something that's not right. The plant architecture, this is a rich source of data for us and it's incredibly important in any breeding programme. Growers are looking for crops that are presenting themselves quite upright. We're looking for fruit that's easy to, to pick on the bush. We're looking to make sure that it's the nice open canopy so the sunlight can penetrate the whole plant. Although we are not looking specifically for machine harvestable crops here in Scotland, some of the traits are incredibly important, so we are interested in a, a uniform ripening and a plant that presents its fruit really well. So these are traits that are really important. If we find a variety that's very leggy, that's stretching out too much, that will get discarded right at the start. If the fruit is particularly superior, we may then keep it as a, a, a parent to try and get some of the fruit quality traits through the generations. But if the plant architecture isn't very good, we know that the growers are not going to want to grow this as a commercial crop. So this then takes us on to finally the fruit quality. Although last, it is by no means least, this is a really important trait in our breeding programme. We are keen to make sure that the quality of our um, blueberries are, are top class. We are looking for something that's got a, a, enough bricks that it's a sweet enough um, blueberry, but it, it, more importantly it needs to have some acid. We are doing some testing this season and we're looking at a lot of the varieties that are available at the moment in the supermarkets and we're finding the acid is so low that the, the crops have been described as bland and tasteless so we know that it's important to have some level of acid within these crops we're also interested in the fruit size, we're looking to fill the punnets quickly um, firmness is a, a really important trait, particularly in this year um, the fact that people are not shopping as often as they did, fruit firmness and shelf life is incredibly important, so we need to make sure that that's something that we are assessing for within our crops. The next step is to evaluate that data. 
To carry out this evaluation, I use a reporting tool from Microsoft called Power BI. This lets us create reports which visualise performance of individual selections and the crosses as a whole. We can compare how selections have performed across each individual trait, as well as rank these based on our priorities, firmness, bricks, sensory, for example. We can import data into Power BI from a whole host of formats and data sources, such as Excel, SharePoint, R and Python scripts, or even Microsoft Forms that I often use for field selection. Once the data has been imported, we can choose how we want to view the results. I'll show you a few different pages of how I like to analyse and visualise my data. Crosses can be summarised in a table to allow direct comparisons to be made between selected traits, such as weight, firmness, bricks and acid, as you can see here. These tables are interactive and each cross can be selected for further analysis. So as I select one of the crosses, you will see the cards along the bottom change, as well as results related to sensory analysis can now be viewed. We can then drill through, which allows us to see the individuals that make up that cross in more detail. I select a cross each month to explore for our breeding consortium, outlining how the cross performed as a whole, as well as why the parents were selected in the first place. This page is set up to visualise the data in a number of different formats. Here we have pie charts, bar and line graphs, and at the bottom right we can see how each of the crosses has performed based on berry weight and bricks. Again, these are interactive depending on the cross, and as you select each one, the remaining graphs change to reflect this. The line graph above shows the BRICS scores changing over the season for each of the crosses selected. This allows us to compare both the seasonality and development of the cross. We can also set our own formulas in which to rate our selections. Again, this would be based on set parameters such as BRICS size or firmness, we can give a weighted score to each selection depending on the results. So a higher bricks would score better than a lower bricks. High acid or low acid would rate lower than our target acid in the middle. We set these parameters based on what traits we rate the highest and depending on what targets we set. These can be changed as we see fit and help us to highlight the top 10 or 20 performers of each season. This page also contains filters in the box on the right. These are tools that can allow us to dynamically set parameters in which to filter out results so we can see how this may change the top 20. This allows us to compare raw data without the influence of our weighted ratings. This is particularly useful during a season where priorities may have changed. This year, for example, due to the current crisis the world is facing, is placing an even higher emphasis on firm fruit, with many retailers saying they're willing to forgive smaller blueberries in their punnets, but will not compromise on firmness. More people worldwide are buying fruit this year, so bigger punnet sizes are of greater interest than previous years, as people are aiming to shop less frequently. So firmness and shelf life is a, is a must. If you look at the scatter plot on the left, we can choose the range we are interested in to remove selections which do not meet this criteria. So a bricks above 12, for example, or a fruit firmness measured by Durafel above 25. Here we can see the table adjusting to show how only those that meet this criteria are now shown. As you can see, Power BI has a wide variety of ways to visualise our data. We can even view our data as fish. The larger the fish, the higher the selection has scored for this trait. The sharks are the overall ratings and the round fish are the bricks. So now we know which selections and crosses performed the best in both the field and in our aquarium, where do we go from here? So by collecting and analysing the data, we can compare selections and crosses to see how they're performing year on year. This allows us to make sure that we are proceeding only with the best selections that we have. We have named cultivars throughout the tunnels that we use to benchmark, so we are looking at least to match the quality of there, if not exceed. And by analysing data in the same way year on year, collecting that data and evaluating that data, we can make sure that only the best selections are fast-tracked and, and taken forward. 
we can also make sure that the right selections are used for parents so we're making our future generations even better than the ones before. So we can eliminate poor performers or those which just don't meet the grade in terms of firmness or flavour. The fruit might look great on the bush, but if the lab and the sensory results don't rate a selection, then Power BI lets us see if this might be down to just one poor harvest, perhaps we've harvested it too early in the season, or if all harvests are below our set standards. So we're in the middle of August now and fruit harvest is going fantastically well. So far this year, we've already highlighted some promising performers in terms of our data. Could these be the fruits for the future? The answer lies firmly in our data. Well, thank you so much for your time today. If you have any questions on anything that you've seen in the video so far, then please email us at the link you'll see on your screen now. And join my soft fruit colleagues and I on Friday for a live question and answer session. Hope to see you there. Thanks again. Bye now. Mm.